Welcome to another episode of uh, Jay Leno's Garage. I have something really, really unusual here, especially in the United States. This is a 1966 Volga Gaz. I hope I'm pronouncing it correct. This is a Russian car. This was a uh, old KGB staff car. It's hilarious. It's, uh, this, <laughs> this is kind of why communism really kind of went broke. Uh, this car, as I said, 1966, this car would have competed against Cadillacs and Oldsmobiles and Buicks and uh, Ford Galaxy 500 XLs like my dad's 7 liter. Uh, and uh, it's interesting. It is an interesting automobile and I like interesting automobiles. It is, the plus side, massively built, incredibly strong, and very good rust proofing for the mid 60s. Most American cars, uh, my dad's Galaxy, after two years it was rust appearing on the fenders. Uh, this thing is built like a Russian tank. <laughs> it's strong, uh, very primitive suspension, leaf springs as you'll see, we'll show you that in a minute. It's about 2.4 something, let's call it 2.5 liter four cylinder engine, 95 horsepower, top speed 80 miles an hour. And this is the deluxe model. Yeah, oh man. And something that's really cool, and I'll show you. Even the tires say made in the USSR. Uh, this is an original unrestored car. I'm not sure if it's been repainted. This might just be heavy, right, white Russian paint. Yeah, put on big strong white paint. Yeah, yeah, very strong paint. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it looks like it's been repainted, but I think it might be original. It's almost a refrigerator white color. Um, not a lot of concessions to style. Uh, a few. This is a, a Series 3, I guess it would be. Uh, you know, anybody watching this, if you have information on these, please put them in our comments section because I'm, uh, there's not a lot of information on these things. I've got some brochures and I'll show you in a minute. They did export some of these, mostly as taxi cabs and things like that. But if you were a successful Russian in the Communist Party, this is probably what you drove. Or if you did something wrong and KGB come to house, these pull up in front, yeah, get in back, midnight, just go for a drive, and boop. So that's kind of the way it worked. It's got a speedometer, it looks a bit like a 1956 Ford. It, there's a few, uh, a few little concessions to the style. Unbelievable heater, the greatest heater in the world. You get in this, put on the heater, you drive you out of car, like Miami in summertime, very hot in car. Uh, but three-speed uh, manual transmission. They did make a few of these with automatic transmissions. I don't know whether it was the Russian winter or the Russian technology, but they were not particularly success successful. So they went back to just the three-speed on the column. It's got a three-band radio, long wave, AM, FM. It's got the Russian writing on it. It's got a clock. You see, when, at least if you're a political prisoner, you'll be comfortable. Uh, just pretty much standard. That's a deluxe upholstery. That would have been a stripper model, I think, in the US. It's really not a <laughs> very attractive car, but it's not bad. It's not bad. You see some of the Western influences in the grill, and in the taillights have a bit of style. Pretty, pretty good sized trunk. Not bad, not bad. Can you see the deer emblem on there? Early Volgas had the big deer on the front of the hood, but so many Russians got impaled on it that it was just too dangerous and they took it off. It looks really, to me, more like a car from the mid to late 50s than it does 1966, especially compared to anything Western. You know, we had automatic transmissions and V8s and and uh, air conditioning and electric windows. This has none of that. And for a four cylinder engine that gets, I think it's 16.5 miles per gallon, which is not really good, not particularly efficient. Uh, let me show you underneath. Take a look at these springs. Look at the suspension on this thing. Look at those springs. Looks like something from a car from the 30s. Leaf springs, look at that rear end, how unsubstantial it is really. Um, as you can see, I put new brake, had no brakes in it when I got it. You'll see some new, more modern brake lines. Oh, there's that deer emblem again. Okay. 
you've got an oil bath air cleaner like you would have in a you know mid to late 50s Buick or Oldsmobile everything here is pretty straightforward distributor uh, the closest thing I compare this to is maybe a early 60s Volvo very agricultural engine but pretty bulletproof easy to work on notice this radiator and this is really interesting see this here see when you pull the handle you block off the radiator completely so no air gets through at all if you're in Moscow and 30 degrees below zero you need something pretty dependable yeah big oil filter over here extraneous oil filter uh, obviously we have a modern battery in it modern coil we had to get it running I have brochure in color take that Western imperialist pig and there's all the specs on it right there the, the model this model look it's got a stick shift can you see that look at that so that's pretty sporty you'll be driven to Siberia in style here's another one here uh, look there's a Volga ambulance it says the body has excellent soundproofing. The interior upholstery is hygienic and washable. It lends itself to disinfection. Remarkable <laughs> roadability, it says. Uh, the Volga enjoys popularity in many countries of the world. Really? All right. Name two besides Cuba. All right. Effective heating when needed. That's true. The heating is incredible. Uh, it has won at international displays and fairs. I don't know if that's true, but look, they show. Look at there. Look at there. It is in the Middle East, and yeah, there it is in Paris, and yeah. So they did try. Ex they did try exporting these. Uh, you know, if, if you like automobiles, it's fascinating to see how, literally, how the other half lives. Um, these were. They made quite a few of them. Not as many as American car manufacturers. We'll take a ride in just a minute. Uh, here's your radio with the kind of the Russian symbols on it. Uh, clock, obviously, that's your speaker. Uh, I'm not sure what these mean. I, I guess it's oil pressure, gasoline, water temperature, horn. Horn sounds the same in any language. You adjust your antenna up here. There's up there on the roof. Let's take it for a ride. I think it might be fun. Okay, put in clutch, turn key, car starts right away. First gear, second gear, third gear. It just sounds a little agricultural, but it's kind of fun. You know, when I go driving this through the Russian neighborhoods in Los Angeles, people go, what is that? And they come running over, oh, you're Volga. Yeah. So, you know, car enthusiasts are the same all over the world. And uh, I'm sure in Russia there are probably car clubs restoring these and doing things like that. Uh, I don't think I have the only one in the United States. I'm sure there are a few out there, but I bet I have one of the few with made in USSR tires on it. That's the nice thing about this thing. It just sat for a long time. And because it's, it's pretty good quality steel, it didn't rust out. So let's go for a spin. This is an example of why communism failed. This was uh, an expensive car in Russia. Lee Harvey Oswald would have had to work in that factory for five years to afford one of these, assuming he never paid rent or bought food. And it's not terrible, but when you realize this would have gone up against uh, Cadillacs or Oldsmobiles or Buicks of the period, four-cylinder, 95 horsepower, not much. The fun thing about these kind of cars is even real car enthusiasts have never seen one and have no idea what it is. This would have been popular in Cuba, or of course in Russia. As I said, it was a KGB staff car. If you saw one of these pulled up in front of your house in Moscow, uh oh, you probably wouldn't be seen again for a long time. It feels kind of like a mid 60s Volvo, but not built as good. It's rugged, but primitive. You only have three speeds. It feels like a heavy car. There's no power steering. But on the other hand, it's easy to work on and easy to fix. Even though it's butt ugly, it's really no better or worse than a lot of 
mid-range cars from this period, the German Taunus or a few of those others. Nice thing is you don't get any speeding tickets in this thing. And air conditioning? Forget about it. FM? Shut up. There are not much sense in taking this up on the freeway because uh, even though the top speed is 85, these tires are pretty old. I like keeping the tires because they were made, in, they say made in USSR, and that doesn't even exist anymore. But hop in and we'll take you for a ride. You'll see what it's like. And we pull away. Yeah, look at the deer. You have deer here. We get from vodka, find Russian girl. It just rides like a mid 60s car. Uh, the Zill, I think, was the big Russian car. This was, if you were a successful member of the Communist Party, or you were an important person, like an astronaut, or a cosmonaut, rather, this is probably the vehicle you'd be given or you could, you could purchase. This thing was built kind of during, not quite the height of the Cold War, that would have been 60 to 63, 64, but uh, the USSR was still in pretty good shape in the mid-60s, and there was still a lot of that Cold War spy stuff going on. The Russians never quite mastered, at least in the 50s and 60s, the mass uh, production techniques that we did, because there was no real inspiration for the work workers to do any better. Nobody could afford to buy these things anyway. I step on brake, I stop car. Big Russian foot, stop car. You know, it just makes me laugh, this car. It's just funny, because when I was a kid, there was nothing scarier than Russia. You know, we used to practice diving under the desks and drills and all that kind of stuff. So to think that one day I'd be driving a Russian car, oh my God, oh, my father would have had a heart attack. What are you, communist? We go back to garage, get some beet soup. Well, back here once again at Capitalist Peak Garage. Hope you'll enjoy riding a Russian car. Build like bull. See you next week.